Uh, I grew up in a, a Christian family. My dad was a pastor. And um, I remember just as a kid, um, just, just being excited about going to church and learning about the Lord and, and things like that. And uh, I remember my parents would have a college group over and I would sneak downstairs after they put me to bed and sometimes they let me sit in and uh, I would sing with them and I would give them some scriptural pointers on, on things that they were missing. Um, and and uh, one night I had, uh, it was a late night and, and it was after one of these college groups and a lot of people had gone home but some people had stuck around and, and they were praying and, and I was there and, and um, my dad and a friend just asked me, you know, if I wanted to, to pray to receive Christ in, into my life and I did. And, uh, and I got baptized uh, a year later. And, um, but all of that kind of came to an end um, because the church kind of split. And my dad uh, got fired and, and, you know, growing up in church, I, I, my world kind of came tumbling down in a, in a way. And uh, I didn't know how to respond to that at, at that young age. And it pretty much stunted my growth. I, I withdrew um, relationally. I, I didn't. I didn't really fit in in some of the churches that we had started going to, and I kind of dried up. And so through high school, um, I got involved at different places in youth group and stuff like that. But um, I still wasn't. I wasn't committed to. Uh, living a life of faith. I was just, you know, I knew how to do the church thing. I knew how to interact with people there. And, and that was actually kind of a place that I enjoyed. Um, but it wasn't until after high school where I was left a little directionless um, that an opportunity came up for me to go do uh, a discipleship training school with Youth with a Mission. And at that time, I had not, I, I was not excited about going to college. Um, or anything like that, so this was kind of a another thing for me to do, and I, I was hesitant about it at first because I thought, I know how these young Christian kids are, they're all kind of excited and, and self-righteous and thing. and I didn't want to be part of, of that kind of crowd, like the Christian do-gooders, <laughs> but, um, but I really felt like even as I look back from an early age, I realized that the Lord um, really had a call on my life, and I, I felt that pull, and so I ended up going, and that's when I first learned how to, how to read the Word by myself, how to pray, how to spend time with the Lord, how to worship, how to fellowship with others on my own, and, um, and so that's what, I came back different, and um, and I've been walking with the Lord since, and I've been a bumpy road at times, but it's led me out to Liberty. It's led me out here to Stanton River Community Church, and I'm just so thankful for uh, just seeing His faithfulness and provision every step of the way. So I remember distinctly one night, I think I was maybe seven or eight. I think I was probably eight, and my older brother had... Uh, given his life to the Lord when he was five. So, you know, I took my time, you know, I didn't feel rushed. But um, we were just praying and, and, um, and I just remember just, just having a realization that the Lord was real and in a, in a way that was beyond like a, a Bible story, in a way that was beyond a, a scripture verse or a memory verse or just kind of a rote prayer. I just remember being spending time in prayer as a young child specifically that night and just feeling his presence and knowing that he was near and realizing wow like Jesus is real and he wants to know me and he wants me to know him and and so it was that night that I wanted to pray that prayer of salvation because I just at that point I knew Jesus was real and and this relationship was a real thing 
And that's why I prayed that prayer and I, and I got baptized later. But then, as if you fast forward, I think it was um, kind of the storms in life. And as I grew out of childhood, that my faith was tested. And I think my response was through that difficulty of seeing my dad get fired, seeing our church fall apart, and, and moving to a place that was unfamiliar to me. And, and missing that fellowship, I think I ended up falling away from the Lord. Not in a way that I was rebellious, but just in a way that I was dry, and I was hurt, and I was confused, and I kind of just, kind of just went with the motions through those years, um, uh, through high school and and things like that. And I had years of um, just real. <laughs> Where I was just secluded from the world, years where I just didn't engage with people. Um, and the Lord kind of used those years to kind of contrast um, kind of my childlike faith and, and that experience that I had, and also with those years that were dry. And, and I, rem I remembered, even though I felt far from the Lord, I remembered that He, he was real and that He saved me and that. He didn't want me to continue like that. And so that's, that's why uh, joining Youth of the Mission and, and getting that training and being surrounded by Christians and, and going out and serving and, and getting into other, other uh, countries and other cultures was so vital for me because it tested my faith and it, it, it challenged me to grow as a believer. And that's something that I, I hadn't as as a child or as a teenager, I, I don't feel like I grew as a believer. I just felt like I had received Christ and I was just kind of like, all right, whatever. I got to the point where I was sort of indifferent. So that's why I was challenged to grow. And that's why I realized this is really what, um, this is really what the words in this Bible, the, the, the words on these pages, that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about a conversion prayer. It's talking about a life of of, of engaging the Lord, of, of experiencing the Lord, of, of going out and following His words and um, meeting with Him every day. And that began that journey that I'm still on now of, of learning more and more of who He is and, and, and more and more of who He's made me to be. So I came back from Wyoming and I was really excited to get involved at church and uh, I ended up getting involved at a church that I had been involved with in, in, in youth. Uh, I was involved in the youth band there. I started going there uh, actually without my family. The rest of my family is going to another church that my dad was serving at. Um, and I started going to this new church and I was really excited. And I thought I can be involved in these certain ways. And um, there wasn't a need there for that. And so. Um, I was kind of placed in a position where, you know, I needed to fill a role for them to serve. And, and really during that time and on, the Lord just brought up different heart issues with me um, through, because I had realized that as such a young, I would call myself a young believer because I was young in my faith and I was learning that I was tangling up God's word with my own desires, and I realized that some of the things I wanted God to do for me were were um, were actually selfish, and I didn't know that at the time. God had to use these different circumstances to reveal to me, um, you know, you can't mix these two things. You can't mix my provision, my faithfulness, with your own desires, and so really, the, those were just several years of me learning how to walk with God, what, what it meant to put my faith in, to put my trust in, to not lean on my own understanding, to acknowledge Him in all my ways and things like that. And it was, it was honestly, it was a bumpy road for me um, where I saw other people kind of uh, being involved in ways I wanted to be involved, other people achieving things that I wanted to achieve, other people getting recognition for things that I thought I could do. Um, 
but God was using those times to work on my heart, and eventually that's what led me out to liberty, and um, that was such a pivotal moment for me because it was like a new chapter in my life, and, and I could take those years of, of wrestling with God and, and apply them uh, to my new surroundings, to my new circumstances, and, and that's really when um, God started to bless me, um, just, just um, you know, meeting Nora and just finding just an amazing wife and um, finding someone that also had a heart for missions and a heart for the Lord and, and that's something I couldn't find on my own. That's something the Lord had to bring and, and coming out here and, and serving here at church is just amazing and it's actually something that I told God I didn't want to serve at a church because I knew because uh, I knew the heartache that comes along with, with uh, these kinds of ministries, but the Lord just continues to say, I'm not doing what you want to do, you're doing what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. And it's just a refining process, and I think it's one that will last until I'm in heaven. So once I realize that, I can just take it one day at a time, one step at a time, and, and trust Him all the way.